They say a week is a long time in politics, but in Kenya, a day, it seems, is even longer. Because this man who's joining me for the interview woke up this morning as majority Senate leader, but tonight goes to bed as an ordinary senator. How does he feel about that? What are his options for the future? Joining me live on Newsnight is Honorable Kipchumba Murukomen, the Elgeo Marakwet Senator. Thank you so much for joining us and for making time for us on Newsnight, despite what I can imagine has been a very busy day. You obviously have followed our stories and you've seen our coverage, but my question to you is, who do you blame for what happened today, Honorable Murkomen? I don't, uh, I don't live my life blaming anybody. So I have no, nobody to blame. Uh, my, my focus is uh, dealing with situations as they come. Okay. And, and solving problems and, you know, proactively dealing with uh, situations. Speaking so of situations... I don't... You, you see, you see, Waiga, you must uh, remember that even for all this period of time, you've never seen me talking about myself. I, I really want, don't want to, a lot of focus to be given to me. Mm -hmm. uh, more focus should be given to the issues. What are the issues being fed into the devolution? What's happening in the Senate? What is happening between the independence of uh, parliament and, and so forth. Okay. If we can focus uh, let, on let's, the issues, let's, I'll be more than happy. Let's talk about the issues. Issue one, Jubilee Party. We know that for, uh, for some time now, the Jubilee Party has been divided on a Bumurkomen between those who support President Kuhuru Kenyatta and those who support the Deputy President. We've heard of Kieleweke on one hand, Tangatanga on the other. The battle lines were drawn. Some would ask this evening, surely you must have seen this coming. Were you the first casualty of these battles between the two sides of Jubilee? Uh, well, I, I, I wouldn't attribute it to that. I would say that, um, I would basically say that you can't really uh, blame the whole Jubilee family of 8 million citizens of this republic. You should just play, blame a few political players who are driving a wedge between the members and the leadership of Jubilee. Uh, otherwise, there are so many Jubilee members, members of parliament, uh, uh, people in the business uh, sector, ordinary okay. citizens who still believe in the unity of, of the party, of the, uh, the president and the deputy to working together. And we, many of us including myself. So, so you don't consider yourself a casualty in the battle between the two sides? For you, that's a no? For me, for me, uh, I'm, we'll looking, for yes, I'm more, looking for a yes or no answer, Honorable Murkomen. I, I, I'll rather say a no. You'll say no. Okay. Because, Waiga, let me, let, can, I, can, I, can I substantiate? Go, okay, briefly, please. Go ahead. Yeah, I was not removed. As per the law, I was not removed. Uh, you, can, you know that uh, the purported list that says it was removing senators. No. It has, uh, uh, no, just hold on there. Because okay. it will explain your concern, yeah? We have a list that says, 20 senators signed to remove Senator Murkomen. In that list, we have 15 Jubilee senators. Uh, of the 15 Jubilee senators who signed, 19 Jubilee senators never signed. So in reality, you can see that I am the majority leader. And uh, the, 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 the threshold for removing a majority leader was not achieved. So to even try to blame my colleagues or blame... Uh, the party or blamed sections of the party when the constitutional and legal threshold was not achieved would actually be avoiding the real issues. Okay, but some would say that you're avoiding the truth tonight. We know that the Senate Speaker today announced a new majority leader. We know that uh, the new majority leader is already being called that even as we speak and was in the House on the seat of the majority leader even this afternoon. Are you being honest with yourself, Honorable Murkomen, to say that you're still the majority leader tonight? As a matter of law, I am the majority leader. But uh, as a matter of pronouncement of the speaker, mm -hmm. he pronounces somebody else as the majority leader. So I have uh, respect. Uh, unless you want to tell me that, uh, uh, I mean, the, the, the true position is that we didn't achieve the threshold for removing a majority leader and majority whip who are in the office. But the speaker has made the announcement that he made. You can understand the circumstance that he was in. You can understand also the, uh, the, the situation that he finds himself. And uh, I, I, as I told you earlier in the beginning of the discourse, I don't like blaming people. I don't like uh, whining and complaining. I, 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 I rather we address 
the the real issues okay that how, how do we take senate to a situation where it will handle uh concerns of common monarchy of strengthening the oversight role of the uh, senate all right uh defending of devolution those are the things that are so dear to me for the last seven years i've been in the senate fair enough you say that in principle you still consider yourself the majority leader but then you said something very interesting in parliament today which many considered your exit speech as a majority leader you said that if you are the person who has been preventing the president from delivering his mandate, then you are now out of the way. That sounded like your exit, Honorable Murkom, and that sounded like you saying, I uh, give up the seat of the majority leader and I move on to, to other matters. And yet no, tonight... My, my, my main focus uh, was on... Uh, uh, there's too much uh, discussion about Murkom and about leadership of Jubilee, about the party, uh, instead of focusing on the issues, big four agenda. When is the last time you, you had anybody talking about big four agenda? Uh, I, so my, I was saying that if this conversation that was going on in the Senate uh, and, and the pronouncement of the speaker is going to help Jubilee to focus on the issues that are integral to the people, I hope that from tomorrow our concern will be about the things that affect the common monarchy. Okay. How did you, how, let me ask you this, how did you first become majority leader? Were you selected? Were you elected? I was uh, elected uh, so, unopposed in, in the, in the, in the, in the uh, Jubilee Party, uh, 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 what do you call PG. What happened is that it was our, our first PG and uh, consensus was built. There are people who ran for deputy speaker, people who ran for, I didn't want to be majority leader, by the way. Okay. Uh, I, I wanted to become majority whip. And then uh, after all the consultation that took place in the PG, mm -hmm. uh, it was proposed that uh, I go for majority whip. And then members were asked, they said whether there was another proposal. There was no other proposal. Mm -hmm. Then I went on a post and so forth. So, there were so, colleagues. There were colleagues who were going for deputy major, uh, deputy speaker. Who were about three, mm -hmm. and uh, a, a negotiation took place between themselves, and they came up with uh, 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 the, the way forward. Many many would say that you were selected. In fact, sources within Jubilee even tonight say you were selected. They don't understand why you are now unhappy that someone else has been selected, and the issue is that it's not you, Honorable Mukwege. As, as I've said, Waika Maura, it's not about me. Uh, the moment I became the majority leader, there would be a day I would exit the majority leader position. Mm -hmm. For me, it's just about what does the law say? What does the standing order say? What is the procedure of uh, removing a majority leader? How do you replace uh, a majority leader? There is a procedure in law that in principle should be protected. But about Murkomen, by the way, can I tell you something as a matter of fact? If the party leader and the deputy party leader had called me, and told me that in the interest of the party, and so that we can unlock certain things that I've, I was unable to do for the party in the Senate, uh, I should give way so that then another person who can able to do it can, can do it. Mm -hmm. uh, we would never even have had to go through all this drama. If, uh, if at least I was given the courtesy to be called, but I would the, have uh, okay. re resigned. I, I want Minister, to interrupt Minister, you. Waika. I want to interrupt uh, you there, you, because you've raised an interesting point. But you were called yeah. on Monday for a Jubilee PG meeting I, I, I was at not, State House. I was not. I SMSs was not. were sent to every I, senator, including actually, yourself, I believe. I, I actually, when I even asked for clarification from uh, friends of mine who work in State House about that meeting, they told me they don't know. So I was not invited. Let someone give the evidence that I was invited. I was not. So, and I, I want to insist, uh, Waika Maura, that had I been invited, forget about all the senators, had I been invited alone mm -hmm. by the party leader, or the deputy party leader, and mm -hmm. tell me, in the interest of the party and the nation, uh, you paving way for another person will help us uh, achieve certain milestones. Please give way. I would have given way. There would be no need for all this drama and discussion. Mm -hmm. The only reason why we find ourselves in the situation we are in is because uh, things went the way they were. No disclosure was given to me about the nature of uh, about the meeting, the nature of the meeting, the agenda. If that had been done, uh, we would not find ourselves in this situation, my friend. So the cryptic, cryptic tweets we saw on Sunday, a day before that meeting, on your Twitter handle, on Honorable Susan Kika's Twitter handle, Bible verses, uh, talking on various issues, had nothing to do with Monday's meeting because many believe that was your way of saying that you know there's a meeting on Monday. No, I saw only the media, the media stories. Uh, no, but they, they, it's, 
it was your Bible verses alluding to some struggle, and many believe that you knew there was a meeting on Monday, but you just did not want to attend. It was, it was, it was you, Aika Maura, and the media who told us there is a meet, meeting on Monday. It was all over headlines of newspapers that there was going to be a meeting, and it's going to be removing me and okay. all those kind of stories. So I was just alluding to the same media report, and I can say without fear of contradiction. If there is any person who thinks he invited me or called me or even had the courtesy to tell me that we would like you to resign from your position, then let them come come forth. I, 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 am not, I was not aware of any of such uh, 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 situations and such agenda. Okay. Uh, but again, you, you then now tell us you knew there was a meeting on Monday. What was so difficult about you attending? And of course, your wing of the Jubilee Party so, have been so talking. Let friend, me finish. Let me finish. Let, You've let been talking you, about. You, 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 you think State House is a place where you just walk? into state house if it was jubilee headquarters maybe i would have gone there mm -hmm. but if state house is not is a protected area you you can't just run to state house uh, so for whatever you, you want don't think you would have been allowed in even though we know there was a pg meeting there on monday if i forced myself there as the majority you know leader the of, of, of senate do you, know, a... do you know the consequences of forcing yourself even to the kenya defense forces or, or, or uh, officers next to your officers there you have to go to these places when you are invited. It does not matter which position and rank you have. Even if you are a cabinet secretary, you don't just wake up from your house one morning and, and visit State House. You have to be invited. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you now believe it's a bad idea for Jubilee party meetings to be held in State House? Well, I have... Uh, and ODM has raised this many times and questioned why that happens. I have expressed myself that, uh, you know, the horror and the stature of State House, mm. first as a place of uniting the people, but also as a place of, uh, uh, a, a, a place of honor and a place of, uh, you know, uh, the fear of the seat of authority uh, could easily intimidate many people when you are dealing with uh, party issues, especially when there are differences and all that kind of thing. And I want to insist uh, why uh, but um, I am a strong believer in the unity of our country. I'm a strong believer in the unity of Jubilee. I believe that uh, the way to take our country forward is to have a united uh, uh, political party and to also uni have a united country. I really want to implore and request the president and his deputy to come together, lead us together as a country, to focus on the issues that affect common Mwananchi okay. and to take our country forward. Okay. And you spoke, you referenced the president this afternoon or this morning in Senate. You said that if you're the person that has been preventing the president from delivering his mandate, then you are out of that, the way on this. What is that mandate that you are referring to, Honorable Mulcom? And you spoke very strongly on the floor of Senate today on the same. You know, Aika Maura have been very focused on fighting for devolution. And sometimes uh, many people misunderstand the Article 96 responsibility of the Senate in protecting counties. Uh, look, for example, I have been vocal about uh, uh, military taking over the governance of Nairobi. I've been uh, vocal, I was vocal about transfer of functions in Nairobi. I have been vocal about uh, resources going to counties. I have been, I led the Senate together with Senator Orengo in going to court to challenge more than 30 laws that have been signed without coming to the Senate, despite the fact that they concern counties. So when we have this clash between the Senate and the national executive, because we want to protect counties, most of you, and unfortunately even in the media, have always categorized it that uh, Ruto Ally fights the president, Ruto Ally does this. I have been doing that from before I was elected. Uh, I did that when I was elected in the first term. But you know, because... Uh, of political expediency, people have categorized it to mean that I am fighting the president, mm -hmm. I'm fighting the national possibilities of uh, protecting devolution and fighting for devolution. And that is that is who I am. And uh, as I said, I am a small person. The president of the Republic of Kenya has so many problems to worry about. We must we must support the deputy, we must support the leadership of this country to deliver on the real issues that are affecting our citizens. And I wish we could put aside politics. You know, many people have been talking about we need to leave politics of 2022, politics of party, politics mm -hmm. of all this. Even amidst this COVID-19 situation, I really still ask you with great humility that I wish our country, uh, like the late Kijana Wamalwa uh, said, the former vice president, 
that I wish we would put all our cards on the table uh, and, and have a honest conversation about how to take our country forward okay. and allow people to ventilate on the, uh, on the ideas they have without victimizing anybody. Because when we allow these ideas to come forth, uh, we are going to build our country, it will become stronger and become even better than other democracies in the okay. world. Okay. Some would ask that when you said today that the president had not delivered a mandate. I know you've talked about devolution, but what specifically were you referring to, Honorable Murkomen? And this is in, in line with taking I, the country I, I, yeah. forward. Uh, I, I, was, I was more and more concerned myself about devolution. Uh, I, you saw I repeated severally. I was concerned about strengthening the Senate to carry it out its oversight mandate, mm -hmm. which the president promised us in the, in the PG in 2017 and promised an oversight fund for the Senate promised also the president promised uh, us in a meeting of leaders of both national assembly and the senate that laws that concern counties will will be referred back if they go to the president without passing through the senate that is a struggle that has been going on for the last seven years and i hope and i said that uh, if i was the stumbling block i hope that now the president after all these processes we are through with all these processes check its legality find the truth of the matter i hope even in the midst of that, our friends who got the opportunity to go to uh, for the meeting that took place uh, yesterday mm -hmm. would have negotiated for uh, a, a rip, uh, I mean, a support from the national executive on devolution and the Senate. Okay. If you, and of course, uh, this coming on the back of what you've just spoken about, if you've been so concerned about these promises that were made but have not been delivered in the past, why did you not resign before it got to this? Would that not have been a stronger message? Uh, resigning Waika would be throwing away that towel. I was, I keep trying, and uh, I didn't want that voice uh, to be lost because I, you remember me saying earlier that so many people have been intimidated that they cannot speak about the issues that are uh, taking place about parliament, the strength of the party. It would have become an application of duty. Even in my position, I, I threw the towel and say, I, I, I want to live my life, I want to focus on my personal benefits and gains and leave the greater good of the country mm -hmm. uh, just for purpose of dealing with small issues. So I, I, I keep trying and, 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 and either I have come from very far. Okay. Uh, I came from as a son of a sport I, I, has taken me a lot of hurdles in life to be where I am. And it was because we kept trying and it's because of the will of God and the grace of God that uh, we are where we are and we, we must always keep trying. Okay. Uh, Honorable Mukomen, have you spoken with the Deputy President tonight on the events that transpired in Senate? What, what is his take on this? Well, yes, I spoke to the Deputy President today and uh, uh, he told me that uh, every great person, this was his own words, he told me that every great person or someone who is greatness uh, must go through fire. And... Uh, uh, and he gave me the things they went with the president, through the president. And uh, he reminded me that uh, him and the president were taken to the Hague. And uh, he reminded me the time we went uh, around praying to be released from the Hague. Mm -hmm. And so that this is a problem for me compared to the monumental president facing ICC at the same time election. And you remember when the president was, was in ICC, we were also having terrorism in the country. We were having mandamano and challenges politically. So it would, my, my challenges are too small compared to what other great people have gone through I, in the I, past. I think, and, and, and it's a good point that you've made, the, Honorable Mukum. And what surprises many is your challenges are from within your party. Again, was that not something the deputy president yeah, well, should have been concerned about, should go talk to the president about? Many would have expected that he would tell you, let me speak to the president and sort this out. Well, uh, I, I, I am sure it's in public domain that uh, the deputy president has been, uh, uh, is, uh, you know, constitutionally is the deputy of the, of the president. Uh, the president constitutionally consults the deputy president when he walks. Uh, the deputy president also presents his uh, counsel to the president. What the has with it is uh, the mandate of the president. He cannot compete with the president. Uh, he cannot have a parallel uh, party or parallel position to the president. And the deputy president has tried his best, even amid provocation from our friends uh, within the party or some people serving within government, 
the president has always, the deputy president has always reminded himself of his responsibility as a deputy and has remained patient. And mm -hmm. you know that is that is what it is. Okay. Today on the floor of Senate again, I keep taking you back there. Did you? accused the president of not telling the truth or was that a slip of the tongue because many of your colleagues in senate were concerned about the route you were taking about what Sorry. you made a statement where you said the president was not truthful on particular matters on the floor of senate was that a slip of the tongue was that uh, I, a, what was what was that all about i said that the president gave us his word about oversight fund the president gave us his word about legislation moving from national assembly to the senate and uh, I, I say that, uh, Mr. President, let's continue telling uh, these people the truth and uh, ensure that this truth uh, helps our, our, our Senate and the revolution to move forward. Okay. Honorable Mukomen, stay on the line. We're taking a quick break. I've got a few more questions for you when we come back. So please uh, just hang on there. In addition, uh, the uh, incoming majority leader of the Senate, Honorable Samuel Pugisio, is also live with us. And also be speaking to him a little bit more about uh, what he expects moving forward. And of course, the manner in which he came into that office. All happening here on Newsnight. Keep sending us your questions. The hashtag is Newsnight. And the SMS line is 22422. Our discussions continue shortly.